Hey everyone, I get this question all the time. How can I break into pharma as a PharmD, a PhD, nurse practitioner, PA, a physician? How can I break in? What can I do to break into pharma if I have no industry experience? And I can tell you it can happen. You can definitely do it. From my research and some of the papers that I've read, about 80% of healthcare professionals who work in the pharmaceutical industry do not, do not have industry experience. So it's definitely doable. It's something you could do. You just have to work towards it. I have five tips today. Tip number one is don't be apologetic. And what I mean by that is if you're applying for a job, don't feel the need to draw to your lack of experience. So don't let's say things like, you know what, I've never met with a KOL. I, I, don't, I don't know what meeting with a KOL is like. Just don't even talk about that. Don't draw attention to things that you don't know. That it's okay. You can still apply for a job as an inexperienced candidate because you have experience in other areas. And the second thing is prioritizing relevant items. I can't tell you how many times people apply to a job and their CV or resume is not prioritized for an industry position. I received so many and it looks like they're applying to a clinical job. And then I'm like, are you applying for a clinical job or are you applying for a job in industry? What kind of role do you want? So make sure that you have your resume and CV. They look really good. They're polished that that they're basically you have a good cover letter and that you're talking about why you would be good for this role or for this position in industry. Be specific, talk about why you would be good for that position. Step number three, highlight any steps that you've taken or you're taking to make the career change. So if you wanna switch from clinical or from a traditional position into industry, make sure you talk about what you've done and why this would be good for you. So for example, if you've taken a course or if you've taken a certification, include that on your CV, include that in your education section. If for example, you're a BCMAS candidate, include that, say I'm a BCMAS candidate on your resume or on your CV. Let everybody know the steps you're taking to prepare yourself to have a certain standard within the industry and why it's important. Highlight yourself, brag about yourself, make sure your resume, CV looks good. Number, uh, the next one, number four, highlighting the steps you're taking to make this career change. Um, sorry, that one is all basically all the stuff, but talk number four is talking about transferable skills. So what have you done um, in your previous work and what can you do to transfer it. So let's they talk about things like communication, teamwork, attention to detail, all of those things that you've done previously can be transferable to the job you're applying for in industry. So make sure you talk about them, you bring them up, even though your duties of your previous job might, you might not think they're relevant, there's always transferable skills that are relevant and you wanna discuss them. Number five, again, tailoring your CV for every application. So every position that you're applying for, whether it's an oncology, cardiology, if it's medical information, medical science liaison, tailor it. Don't just use the same CV for every single job you're applying to. People can pick up on that. And how many times I've looked at them and I'm just like this, they don't even know what job this is. They don't know. And I'm not going to offer them the interview. I always say there's two steps too. So I, I went through the five, but there's two parts to getting or landing the job. The first is securing the interview. So you wanna make sure that you have the education, you have all the resources behind you to land that interview. Your CV looks good, it's polished, there's no typos. You've included all your relevant information. You might've taken extra courses on the side in addition to your clinical work. And I think that's really relevant. So then you can get the interview. So if you're not getting an interview, something's wrong with it beforehand. You either need more credentialing or a better CV or resume. If you're landing the interview and you're not getting the job, then something's wrong with your interviewing. That's where you might need help with a coach or somebody to help you with it, landing the interview, being able to talk about a trial if you have to go through a clinical trial. So you wanna make sure you get both parts. So again, if you're landing the first part, if you're getting the interview and you're just not getting the job then something might be wrong with your interviewing skills, but if you're not even getting the interview, then that's when I really recommend taking a course, taking a certification, building up your resume, building up your CV, potentially getting your resume or CV fixed or helped professionally as well. So all of those are steps to help you land your next job in pharma.